Good afternoon and welcome to St. Thomas More. We appreciate all of you who braved the nice cold to come in and celebrate Mass with us this evening. We begin our celebration by joining in singing number three, two, one. Gather us in number three, two, one. Please stand. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And brothers and sisters, in order that we may worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Christ, only begotten Son, 
mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said, go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to obedience you gave me holocaust 
priests or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll, it is prescribed for me to do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is written in my heart. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have received from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you going? Where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. 
Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So here we are back in ordinary time, and um, I want to maybe just share with you a, a brief thought and kind of build that up a little bit, and that is simply that um, silence has the capacity to amplify the voice of God. Silence can amplify God's voice. I just, I love that first reading where God is truly speaking to Samuel. He hears his voice. Something that's very subtle that we might not pick up on, but he hears his voice precisely because there's silence. (laughs) He's in the temple. He's sleeping in the temple, and that is a place of silence. We don't always think of our churches as a place of silence as much anymore, I don't think. In In many ways, I think we've kind of lost that. He can hear his voice in silence. I want you to be assured, and and God speaks to each one of us. No matter who we are, he's speaking to you. He is, and he does that in many different ways. Let me talk about some ones that are really obvious that we don't always think about. One of the ways that God speaks to us is through his word. So the scripture readings that you've heard this evening, that's God speaking to you, literally, (laughs) We, we think of it like that. We're just, well, I'm just hearing some readings. No, that's God speaking to you personally. Okay? That's how God speaks to us. That's one way he speaks to us. He speaks to us through the sacraments. You know? What's happening at Mass? What is God saying to us at the Mass? I love you so much that I want to feed you with my word and my body and blood. I want to pour out my life for you. That's what he's saying to us. Do we hear that? He speaks to us through other people. That's what the gospel is about. People are being called to God. They're called to Jesus through invitation. Hey, come and see. Look who we just met. This guy, Jesus, this Lamb of God. Invitation. That's God speaking through others, right? The more difficult one, and that's the one I want to focus on most, is he speaks to us in the silence of our hearts. He speaks to us in the silence of our hearts. The second reading we heard, St. Paul told us, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That means God dwells in you. Each of you, if you're baptized, God dwells in you. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, God. Your bodies are temples. And so God speaks to us there. And we're always, we always have God with us in a very personal and particular way. So maybe we could ask the question, well, why don't I hear God all the time? Gosh darn it. (laughs) Well, I think this is why. This is what I firmly believe. Because I feel like we live in a world and a culture that's just inundated with noise. Lots of different voices, very loud voices out there that drown out God. That drown out any sense of silence so we can't hear his voice. Just think of, you know, like the 24-hour news service. Uh, social media, uh, our tablets, our smartphones that we're constantly glued to, all of these things just drown out God's voice. Absolutely, they do. And silence. I, I always think of the example, and I, this has always just baffled me. I'll, I'll go to like a hospice house where there's somebody dying, and I'll go into their room, and Jerry Springer is blaring on the TV, and I'm just like, this is awful. Like, I mean, it's not only loud in here, but it's just junk. Like, at least let's put on some sacred music, you know. Turn that crap off, and let's pray. Anyway, that's just a little personal thing. We got to proactively create spaces of silence in our lives. I'm not saying that we have to go around, you know, silence, all that. That's not realistic. But just create little spaces where we can listen to the voice of God. 
um, just maybe share with you a little bit, it's why I'm here. <laughs> it's why I'm here at St. Thomas More. Um, four months ago, I was on an eight-day retreat, a silent retreat. So you, lots of silence and lots of listening to God. And God, sometimes he speaks through your body. I was having panic attacks because I was not addressing things that were happening in my life and in my heart. And God was saying, Christian, wake up. Look at this over here. You have not paid attention long enough and you need to do something right now. So I went home and I called the bishop and I said, I need help. So they're saying, well, we'll go to, he'll send you to St. Thomas More. You can mess with them over there. <laughs> but it's, praise God, because if I didn't have that retreat, I wouldn't have heard God. I would have just gone through life and just grounded out, not listened to him. So I just want to maybe just a couple practical things we can do to listen to the Lord more. Um, it's like here sometimes when we're driving, we turn on the radio. Maybe just don't turn it on if you're in the car alone. <laughs> it just that's a great time to listen to God, especially if you're on a, a road trip. Um, my big thing is take 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes daily, just to be silent with the Lord, um, and you don't have to say anything. The only thing you should say is, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And just be there with Jesus. Listen to him. If you don't hear anything, don't be frustrated. It's good prayer. Just be in there in silence. It takes practice, right? It's difficult. We're impatient. We're, we, want, we want something to happen now <laughs> and quickly. But that's part of the beauty of prayer is that waiting and just being with the Lord. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I know that when my younger, my, what my mom would say with us five kids, she would say, I would lock myself in my bathroom and hide from you so I could get 10 minutes of silence, <laughs> right? So if you have lots of little ones, do that. <laughs> uh, maybe read um, reading the sacred scriptures quietly. If you're like, if you need to do something or think about something, just read quietly and, and prayerfully the word of God until you, something rests and hits you and you want to maybe spend more time there. Silence amplifies voice, the voice of God. So let's make a little bit of silent space in our lives. Let us profess our holy faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. In him all things for us, men, and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. This kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the Son. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence and faith, we turn to our Heavenly Father in prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Johnston, Father Justin, 
Father Christian and Father Paul, may God grant them the grace and wisdom, patience and fortitude to lead all people to Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, as we recall the words and works of Dr. Martin Luther King, may we renew our commitment to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood and make justice a reality for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. For those suffering from chronic or life-threatening illness, and those in hospitals and nursing homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For artists, musicians, and all who evangelize through beauty, and for those taking home sacred art this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the everlasting joy and peace of the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intentions we bring to Mass, including for Matt Stegeman, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask that you hear the prayers that we have voiced to you and those that we hold within the silence of our hearts, for we offer them through Christ Jesus, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate wordily in these mysteries. And whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come to the Lord's table, we join in saying number three, four, one, behold the Lamb, number three, four, one.
deliver us from evil. Make us one, be our shield, make still the winds that blow. Cradle us with love. Behold.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome to any visitors and to parishioners who are back with us after an extended absence. Uh, next weekend is the second collection for the home missions. Time to re return your old palms to be burned for Ash Wednesday. Baskets to collect palms are in the narthex. The series on the first five books of the Old Testament meets on Thursdays in Moore Hall. The grief support group meets this Wednesday in the parish office. This Monday, Living Waters, a 20-week ministry helping individuals experience integration and healing from sexual compulsions and relational wounds begins its annual offering at St. Thomas More. The parish office is closed on Monday. The daily mass will be at 9 a.m. This weekend, the St. Thomas More Green Team collects prescription pill bottles recycled for use in pet shelters. Collection bins are in the narthex. Eucharistic adoration is held in the church on Sunday following the 11 a.m. Mass until 9 p.m. For details of any of these events, check out the bulletin, website, weekly email blast, or scan the QR code in the pews. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We conclude our celebration this evening by joining in singing number 384, sent forth by God's blessing, number 384. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from his dwelling take leave. God's sacrifice ended, oh, now be extended, the fruits of this Mass in all hearts who believe. The seed of Christ teaching, our inner soul reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. His grace shall incite us, His love shall unite us to further God's kingdom and answer His call. With praise and thanksgiving to God who is living, the tasks of our everyday life we embrace. Our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, we claim as our neighbor all those of each race. One breath that has fed us, one light that has led us, unite us as one in his life that we share. Then may all the living with praise and thanksgiving give honor to Christ and his name that we 